Hello, Gwenters, and welcome back for a Thirsty Thursday. Today we're going to be covering Nilfgaard decks, but PSA, don't play Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard is pretty trash this season. Um, pick four other factions. Honestly, I think Nilfgaard, in my opinion, is performing the worst, uh, least consistent, the least number of engines. Um... They're in a sad state right now. I think that they've been so much built up to be a, a deck of removal that in the current meta of removal plus tempo, they've just missed out because they're not able to put up enough tempo over three rounds. So with that stated first at the beginning of this video, I will now show you some decks you can play if you know, you're not pro and you're not even close to pro and you just want to play some nilf card decks uh first and foremost you know i've had a pe couple people comment this on my discord and on youtube but consistent witchers is a pretty fun deck uh you can do some cool stuff with letho kingslayer to copy uh siri dash i guess you could also copy siri um i don't know if he'd come back into your hand but it, it is a transform so theoretically would still stay there the whole time but um the, uh, hoping to see some love for witchers in this next patch um my true dream would be that there's like a, a witcher leader either like a whole new neutral faction uh that can take advantage of some of the witcher plays or at least like one witcher archetype for each of the factions but nilfgaard has the most witchers with Seret, ox letho letho kingslayer uh and then also has uh viper witchers so we have all of those in here. If I was to make some tweaks, I'd probably try to round these down so you just had Imperial Brigade, Hunting Pack, and Dyth Winds. Uh, that way your Vigo gets you a guaranteed thinning play. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's just Witchers all day, every day. Uh, Trial of the Grasses is an underappreciated removal card or a boost card that you can play one way or the other. I love it. It plays really well with the trio. Um, but anyway, I have a video on that. Check that out if you want to see more of how that deck plays. Many thanks to the community. Despite being a trash faction uh, this season, Morvran's Mind Fork is my most watched video of all time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now over a thousand views. Uh, never expected, always appreciated. I, I just really have loved uh, everybody reaching out, giving ideas, and supporting the channel. Uh, I'm just a dude who does this on the side for fun and all the help and support you guys give during these troubling times is always appreciated. Just the sense of community that we have is I, I truly appreciate you guys. But um, this deck is fun. It's really weird. I would make changes to it uh, like I've described in my video. I, I actually don't even think this is the exact same deck that was in the video. Um, you can do some fun things with Courier and Tibor. You can also use Vilgefortz to get that for you. Uh, and then Kahir just makes it so you can actually keep up with the other decks. Um, so you got to be able to protect Kahir some way, somehow. Uh, but if you can do that, you're going to be okay. Um, it ruins monster decks, by the way. All the monster decks are based off of boost right now. So Kahir just annihilates them. Um, and then finally, satirical removal. I would totally change this ability. Uh, you know, this is just a satire. If you wanted to make this deck work, I would actually use imposter instead of imprisonment. Imprisonment does damage before it locks the unit, which I find to be quite annoying and not really um, in the archetype for Nilfgaard. I, I think that should just leave them alone. Van Hamar and Vatier both lose value. Uh, after using this leader ability because it does damage. And I think they're just trying to repl replicate a third caller, and that doesn't really make sense for me. Especially when you are keeping in mind Amnesty cards, right? Where Amnesty is like this tool that's used by Nilfgaard to gain leverage over uh, vassal states or opponents. But, you know, we are where we are. So, those are my decks. Uh, let's jump over. I'm going to show you guys some of the decks I, I was looking through. Um, these are the ones that are up. The Soldier Swarm deck. Uh, you know, videos in, Ru in Russian. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, viewers out there. But uh, in Russian, so it's a little bit hard to understand what's being talked about and what's being said. But, you can see, but the deck itself is pretty interesting. You can do some kind of crazy stuff with these Derlins. 
uh, you can get them with Vigo, and then you get the uh, you get the Vream to boost them after you've played Vergriff. Uh, Oniromancy is here for consistency, but I think you still struggle with it. It's hard to get it exactly right, but you can go like Ramon, Operator, uh, Vigo, all get you the copies of that soldier. And then Glynis is here for the Assimilate proc uh, to get you just massive points because you're replaying him over and over again. Uh, you can even use Offering onto this Artorius Vigo play so you can play them, play something from your graveyard. Um, it will kill the unit so it goes to your graveyard so you can just like play it over again. Um, kind of an interesting card. I think we're gonna build a new deck with this in Northern Realms using Ronvid because there's some crazy stuff you can do with that. But uh, that is for just a window into the future, hopefully next season. This season I kind of burnt out with Northern Realms being pretty boring around Shieldwell. Uh, I am you, imposter version. Uh, Ace of Plays always has some spicy decks. Uh, I, you know, we had one that we were trying out. If you watch my Twitch, um, you know that we tried this. But if you don't watch my Twitch, please do. We have a, a ton of fun. They're pretty short streams, so you can watch me and then go watch something else. We get right to the point. But you can use this portal to bring in, obviously, Dooku Guards or Arnfen Cavalry. But we had done it with a seer as well, so you can kind of do this deck, but you can double portal, uh, which is kind of nuts, crazy thinning, especially if you wanted to build in some other cards like Hunting Pack and Imperial Brigade. Uh, I probably wouldn't do both, but uh, I think especially Imperial Brigade makes a lot of sense if you wanted to do a deck like this. Take advantage of the thinning buff. That's probably my best suggestion to you if you're ever using Nilfgaard. Uh, Lockdown, um, this is a new player, I haven't heard of him before, but Savage Hotties, um, really kind of interesting deck, pretty similar to a lot of the ones we've seen out there, but you can do some fun stuff with this kind of archetype. Uh, I don't love the morale, I think it's an unnecessary inclusion for the extra poisons, especially with so many Veiled units, and if you're running Yen's Invo and Vincent, it's just too much, I think this is why we made the satirical removal deck, is to just showcase how much... Of a, of a kind of poor position you're left in with Nilfgaard when all you're doing is running removal because you need points on the ball, on the board. Um, double ball works in your favor by putting up, you know, these multi-unit plays when you play, like the, the one that annoys me most is when you, uh, when you get out Masquerade Ball and then you play Roderick, he's an aristocrat. So then he plays a Fangs of the Empire and then you play out another, like Vincent, for example. Uh, you remove a unit and then play out another Fang of the Empire because he's also an aristocrat. Um, I've kind of gone on a diatribe about this. That The thing that's missing for Nilfgaard, if you're looking and paying attention to the other factions, is a good, solid bronze core with tempo. They just, it's just not there. Magna Division is like an auto-include and it, it plays for four points. Uh, if you play properly and you play right into row punish. So, uh, you know, it just, it's not a good deck. Uh, it's not a good faction in so far as bronzes go. But the golds are legendary. Um, and I think that that's the real problem with Nilfgaard right now, right? I, I, Vincent is so good. He really is. And anybody who tries to tell me otherwise, I'm going to be like, show me another card that even compares to his ability to both one do the removal himself on like on veiled units like the new leader transforming cards a good example is just get rid of Harald boom he's gone get rid of uh, uh, Donamir uh, in a shields deck boom that he's gone um, his ability to do that is already kind of nuts when compared with other 10 point 10 provision cost removal cards trig v being a good example uh, but the thing that is most broken about him, in my opinion, is he's the only one of those removal cards that triggers progress on the scenario. Um, so that's what I think, if you want my opinion, uh, I think a lot of the hate towards Nilfgaard is legitimate because the gold core is freaking nuts. The ability to just immediately remove, immediately remove, uh, and then play for tons of points. And there's no coup de gras in this deck, but then play for tons of points again with coup de gras. It's kind of broken. Um, but they have no good bronzes. So if you're a fan of Nilfgaard and you're mad, that makes sense. If you hate Nilfgaard and you're tired of playing against them because of their removal, that makes sense. They can both coexist. 
And that's why I would recommend against playing Nilfgaard. You just make people mad, and you usually don't win over 50% of the time. If you do want to win, I don't love this deck by Ace of Plays. I would I would kind of stick with one of my older Enslaved decks. A um, couple of reasons why I'll walk you through. But Treason doesn't usually find great value for me. But the Enslaved Tactics decks are quite good. Um, you can even kind of flip them around if you want and, and use the Menno uh, archetype to get more consistency, uh, which plays really well with Marching Orders uh, and with War Council because you can kind of pick and see exactly what those are with War Council, but you can also put back a lo uh, like Menno as a good example to get him out immediately. Uh, and Marching Orders into Menno into another tactic when you already have out Hefty is just nuts. The points you put out on the board are crazy. Uh, the ability, as a sub plays points out here, to steal a defender is pretty awesome. Uh, just make sure you have max number of tactics. I think it's very doable. I think you can use it. Um, this is probably the deck I would say that gets you the most and best chance at winning. Um, and Siri Nova here is quite good as well with this deck. The carryover value is very nice. Uh, but that's it. That's all I've got for Nilfgaard. If you have other suggestions, you've seen other decks you think I missed, uh, I do want to say I did not cover any mill decks. I don't cover them on purpose because for me, for a deck to be a quality deck, it has to withstand a mirror match. Mill decks are trash in the mirror. Um, if you've ever... I don't even play them that much because I, again, I, my first point of Nilfgaard's problem where they don't have enough tempo to compete uh right now is true and that deck doesn't have even as much removal as a ball deck does for most mill decks so you kind of just annoy people and still end up losing <laughs> you're wondering i have i have taken my share of losses trying to get an elf guard to work this season you can see that here um but uh i yeah i just i i would steer clear i i don't think that they're gonna get you anything really awesome i don't think that it's a worthwhile play and mill decks i just intentionally don't do um because they, they are trash in the mirror and for me a good deck has to be able to withstand a mirror match you you have to be able to play against the exact same deck and if you make smart good plays you have to be able to win um and that can kind of differ whether you're on blue coin or red coin but that's just my perspective other people might have other thoughts. That's what the comment section is for. That's what Discord is for. I love hearing what you guys think about that. Give me all of those thoughts and suggestions. We'll incorporate those into future decks. But uh, also, please let me know what you think about these deck review videos. Um, I know they're quite a bit different from what we had been doing, but I, I, I feel comfortable in saying that this channel has done more decks uh, with a deck a day for each of the factions than most other channels out there, and I'm still pretty small doing this on top of a regular job so i feel comfortable kind of mixing things up but i do want to hear what you guys would prefer but until next time and until next thirsty thursday uh good luck on the path get out there and keep on gwenting